I'm um, really excited about uh, week two. Uh, we're sitting at 1-0 and uh, feeling good about it. Obviously, there's some, uh, some uh, performance that we wish we could have back, uh, but uh, definitely some learning moments for our team and uh, specifically for our offense. Uh, but learning moments for all three phases, for special teams, offense, and defense. Um, happy that we got the win. That's, that's the f- first and foremost, that's the, mo- that's the most important goal. Um, but I'm also happy with a lot of the performance that we saw from individual players. Uh, obviously, we'd like to see more points on the board and uh, we'd like to have more PATs rather than punts. Um, but uh, when, you know, th- looking at it from, from uh, being able to watch it and evaluate film and, um, you know, talk to the coaches and the players, uh, very fixable things where we can be in a better position to have more success in all three phases. And uh, we feel like uh, the, the, when, the, the, the mistakes, the miscues, and, and not to be able to take advantage of opportunities uh, were costly, but uh, things are very fixable. Uh, usually when things like this happen in, in the week one, there's a lot of unknowns. We know a little bit more now. And uh, things that we can focus on to help us will be very fixable. Things that uh, dealing with uh, ex- execution, um, assignment, sound football, um, mistakes like drive killing penalties and things like that, uh, we can really fix. And so, looking forward to this week. We've seen our guys perform better um, as a team. So it's not like we're completely happy with two phases and upset with one. All three phases are looking to improve, and we need to make that big jump of improvement from week one to week two. Really looking forward to the prep this week. So I'll take any questions that you guys have. But before that, I'll mention that we are playing Southern Utah uh, this weekend. Uh, well-coached team. Coach Fitzgerald does a great job. They're really tough. Um, we've seen uh, he's been there for a while. We've had, we've had um, uh, you know, one of our analysts that was a – Offensive coordinator there, so they're very familiar with our scheme. We have, we know that there's uh, players that have left us that have been in the, on, on that team on the defensive side as well. So really familiar with them, being an in-state team, seeing them play quite a bit and watch them against Arizona State play a close game with them and uh, you know losing a close one, 24-21. So definitely have our uh, have our attention, a lot of respect for them. I coach down there, so my oldest child was born in Cedar City. So um, we have a lot of fond memories of the T-Bird program and looking forward to them being up here in Lavelle Edwards Stadium and just uh, looking forward to the matchup, looking forward to an opportunity for us to play again. And I uh, just really want to uh, compliment our, the, the Rock, our student section, and the rest of Cougar Nation that were in the stadium, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, for a lot of our newcomers, the, the, the electricity and the energy was definite, uh, was uh, it was, a, it was a definite a positive for us. I know uh, uh, Jay Hills mentioned it before that it was he, he didn't realize how much of an advantage it is. So having them there, uh, the fans there with so much energy, we appreciate them. We're looking forward to getting even more electrifying with uh, more performance in all three phases. So hopefully we can get that done this weekend. So thank you. Take any questions. Thanks, Coach. We'll start with a couple of questions from Jared Lloyd. Tony, you talked about this uh, in in general, but I wanted to ask specifically about the offensive line. I know that there were, you know, there's talk a lot of talk about the depth there, and then there were some penalties, and you know, it took a while to get the run game going, and some of those things. How did that that unit look? What did you see as you as you looked at them? Yeah, the mistakes can go all all around, and so I know that people are going to want to talk about mistakes on offense. So it wasn't just uh, on one phase, on one side, or one position. Uh, I didn't think all I didn't think uh, all the position played perfectly or even in a championship level like we're used to. Uh, let's get them back there. I, I think I've seen it. I've seen it uh, before in the years past with uh, A Rod calling the plays, and I've seen it with these coaches getting them the best out of their guys. And I've seen a lot of people praise them before. So uh, this is definitely humbling for them. Let's get back to our our uh, natural old ways, and, and that usually comes back down to the basics. We'll focus on the fundamentals. We'll focus on the things that we can control, the things that we've seen them do before, and we'll get there. So that, that's not just limited to the O-line. That's every position. But in terms of the O-line, we've seen them play better before, and, and we're looking forward to getting that done again this weekend. I also wanted to ask about how much you look at changing the depth chart up. I mean, obviously, game's different than practice. And do, you, do you do a lot of that? Just, hey, you know, let's, let's shuffle it around. I know you always talk about how important competition is. 
Yeah, I mean, the competition is always going to be the key. But it, when you're looking at it in terms of the game, so we have all, um, most of the knowledge that you guys don't get to see. And we, we know who when all 11 guys are doing the right thing. So it's hard to get frustrated at, at somebody that's running the ball or that's catching the ball or throwing the ball when when they're not even supposed to, when the other 10 guys aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. So it, it's tough to... To critique a, a quarterback when the receiver runs a wrong route, or tough to get upset at the running back when the, when the O line misses the, the block or, or has a mental error and the tight end misses his block. So uh, we have to do it relatively with what we see and w- w- what we're judging it on, but also can't be all just on one game. I think there's a lot of things that we can judge it. We, we have all the information. I'm trying to explain to you guys where we're at. Uh, we feel like these are the guys that. Got us there, but there, there's always a always an opportunity for us to tweak it, depending on what we see and who's performing at the best. That that way, the competition lives on. Okay, uh, we'll take a couple of questions from Jay Drew and then Kevin Reynolds. Lonnie, I wanted to ask you about uh, Jacob Robinson. What do you uh, recall as far as getting him from Utah State, and maybe even his recruitment before that, and and what? Uh, his performance, uh, how would you rate it the other day? Yeah, I, I was really impressed with him out of coming out of high school and uh, watching him at Orem. Um, Big-time playmaker, and, and he did it on, on both sides of the ball. So I saw that he was a guy that had great ball skills and could – I mean, when he was playing at Orem and, and they'd throw the ball up there, he'd, he'd go grab it. And so very talented player. When we recruited him, I'm not sure the um, – if everybody was on board with him, they, they, I think there's a few people that said he was a little too small. Um, but uh, luckily, uh, uh, you know, you, you have a wonderful sp- uh, strength conditioning program and nutrition around them that can get guys bigger. So when we unfortunately lost him to Utah State, uh, I was glad that, that he was able to come back. And, and it was it was an, an easy thing for myself and Gennaro to welcome him back to our staff and, and to our I mean, to our program as staff and for our, for our evaluation to be kind of like, hey, we project him being a, a big-time player, and uh, and he's been everything that we, we thought he could be. Potential-wise, he, he's, uh, he's got so much, so much ability, and he's physical. So, uh, you know, I know people questioned his size from before, but it's like he's playing big now. So uh, it just goes to show when you, when you have that type of heart, um, you can accomplish a lot of great things, and, and something that you can't really see in, in the measurables is uh, a person's desire. And the one thing I can I can tell you from him is you can tell he loved football from the beginning. The first time I met him, he loved football, and, and, and he loves being a teammate. So I'm just really happy that he's on our team and paid off a lot. You know, the time that he's been here, and definitely in game one. Great, right, Kevin. Hey, Kalani, uh, Aiden Robbins, only seven carries on Saturday. I'm curious, do you think that's like enough of a of a sample size to really evaluate it, and what did you kind of make of his day um, on Saturday? I think when you're looking at the overall, I mentioned it from before, it, it's it's kind of tough to just, uh, you know, evaluate everything that he's done on the seven carries. And so uh, you have to figure out, you know, what everybody else is doing well and what he can control. But... Uh, I like his attitude. I like his his buy-in. I like his belief in in the system. And so he's going to have to keep leading us and helping our team. And uh, you know, we 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 put we feel like we have um, a good core of running backs that we can use. Uh, some some weeks you're going to get more carries than the other until we see guys start to really take the initiative and take the take ownership of the position. Then uh, that, that's what happens. And, and we've had that done before where we've had guys kind of. Share share the load, and then uh, when someone shows that they can get it done, hard to do that. Just making that judgment off of one week, and, and definitely off of just one, the one performance when when we had plenty of mistakes to go around. Okay, we'll take questions now from uh, Ron Weaver and then Mitch Harper. Yeah, coach, we saw Jay Hill on the sideline calling plays. Is that something that we're going to see going forward? Um, I know usually sometimes defensive coordinators can mix it up between the sideline and the box, but Jay Hill was down there. Was that just for the first game, or is that going to be a permanent thing that he wants to do or you guys have talked about for the rest of the season? No, the way we were brought up, that's how we do it. So that's uh, when I was a coordinator, I was on the field, and, and uh, Jay feels most comfortable being on the field as well. And I like him being down there. I love his energy. Uh, I like how he's 
you know, getting the crowd into it. And uh, he was using his own, man. It was really fun to watch. And I, 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 I'm really pleased with the way that they perform. And he, the wonderful thing is he, he knows that there are more big plays out there that we could have had. And, and uh, again, defense performed well. We got a, a shutout. But, uh, there's, man, there's so many more plays that they could, we could have been more dominant as a defense, and, and we left some plays out there. So hopefully we can capitalize on that, learn, and and uh, stay humble, find ways to get better. Jay, Jay's the guy that's going to get that done. And my follow-up question, just talk about how do you feel like the linebackers performed? Your defense held in the 38 rushing yards. You had A.J. Von Pachong, Ben Bywater, Max Tooley, those guys leading the charge. How do you feel like they performed overall in game one? Yeah, really good players. I mean, there's, there's room for improvement. I don't think they played um, without mistakes. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is when mistakes were happening, it's like they're just trying to make the play. It's got to be in the – it's got to be – you can't freelance. It's got to be in, in, your, in your responsibilities. And so if they're supposed to be in a certain place at a certain time, uh, make those plays. And so I can't say that it was, uh, it was perfect, but we're looking for that perfect game. I can tell you the one thing I can count on with those guys that – they play hard, they play physical with a lot of energy, and I can always count on them being around the ball. So that, that, that works for us, and really pleased with, with the, the level of, a, of physical play that they had uh, with the linebackers. But that goes for the entire defense. I thought they tackled really well. Lonnie, how big of a role in the offensive struggles were due to so many new players uh, on that offensive side of the ball? Uh, it could be a factor. I think there's a bunch of different factors going into it, Mitch. If you're looking at like the, um, I, I think every everything has kind of a, a piece of the pie, in, in why we didn't perform better. Um, but uh, yeah, I think most of it that we're going to focus on is that we're make there are quite a few mistakes, um, and that's that's our job as coaches make sure that we don't play with so many mistakes. And uh, I've seen these guys not make so many mistakes, and I think maybe. You know, it was a it was a big time environment. Um, a lot of people first time in the, in the stadium. Um, so I like to make excuses for them all, but we don't have time for that. We just got to got to see production, and we got to see guys make make better decisions and guys perform like we've seen them practice. And so that's that's going to be the, the the deal for us this week is, is get them get them being. You know, now that we've seen seen on film. I know some guys are embarrassed by the way they performed on offense and. Uh, let's just keep building on it. We got we got to find ways to get better, and then you don't you don't get better by sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. So doesn't matter if you, everyone's a veteran now. You've been, you've had one time in in, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, so we're all we're all veterans. It was a, it was fun, electrifying. We need we need more uh, more electricity and more efficiency on offense. You've noted a few times on Saturday night after the game, and just now with what they've done in practice for. What you saw in the game on offensively, did that come as a complete surprise that there was no signs of that that sort of struggle uh, in, in practices and throughout camp? I think when when adversity hits or when there's a, when we're, we're below expectations, I think that's when you find out how people react and and the, the goal is to get them to react to going back to the basics rather than uh, rather than pushing themselves to try to do more than they're. they're they're, they're supposed to. The, the only way it works is everybody does their 111th. That's, that's the only way it works. It doesn't work by one guy just taking taking ownership of it by themselves. I haven't seen one person beat 11. I've seen some really good players <laughs> come close, but that just doesn't happen if you don't have everybody doing their 111th. And that's that's the goal. Everyone just does their part. When things get tough and, and, and you're going against teams that, and you hit some adversity, you go into teams that get some success against us, then you go back. You go back to doing your job the right way and doing it, doing it perfectly. That's that's what it comes down to. And then, and you, the answers here are, are simple, and uh, and they're basic. It's, it's rely on the fundamentals. Go back to the small, simple things, and and good things will happen. We'll take questions from Jay Katz and then Sean Walker. Yeah, Kalani, when it comes to you talk about uh, your offensive line not performing to your championship expectations, I wanted to ask you about the defensive line in particular. What was your evaluation coming out of that Sam Houston game for your D-line? Yeah, I thought D-line was really disruptive. I thought they created a lot of alleys for our, our um, linebackers to run through. I thought they got great knockback, physical up at the line of scrimmage. 
Um, obviously, there's some things that they can improve on too. We, we lost a couple gaps and, and uh, didn't 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 use the right, right technique. And um, you know, a lot of that is guys just uh, stepping out, trying to make the play rather than than make the play through their assignment. You know, but um, the, the the mistakes didn't happen. Just had to happen on one side. It happened on all three phases. So. Uh, defense, they can improve. Um, I, I thought um, Sam Houston had a plan to, to try to run the ball, uh, do some RPOs, um, get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly. So they give us a lot of opportunities to really get after the quarterback as much as we wanted. But it did pre- provide us to get three interceptions and did provide us to get some tackle, tackles for loss and control the run game. And so uh, teams are going to have a hard time being successful against this defense if they can't run the ball. Yeah, you, you took the onus for the failed fake punt on Saturday. I wanted to ask you, is that a determination that you make that call? Is it Kelly? Who, who ultimately called that? No, it's, it's both of us, but I'm the head coach. So, you know, I I, I can approve everything or, or, or not do it. So, you know, when when we feel like we can go for it on fourth down, it's my decision to say, okay, let's go for it or uh, let's punt the ball and let Rico flip the field for us. So that's uh, – it all comes down on me. Um, when that does happen, and, and uh, thought it was there, and you know what, watching on film, it was. We just need our guys to do all, make make all the plays. We practice stuff, so I don't I don't want to practice stuff and not call it in the game. So that's that's what we do, and you know, it's, it's just uh, I like to see more teams try to come after our punts. We'll see what happens, you know. So the uh, glad defense stepped up and made a play. So we've, I think I think I've had a couple. Failed, failed pun, fake pun attempts, and it's cost us zero points. So I don't know if I've learned my lesson yet, but you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Every week's going to be fun. So, that kind of leads into my next question a little bit because I know no one ever wants to ask it about the punter, and, and I'm sure talking about the punter is kind of a mixed bag for you. Uh, but what what you saw out of Ryan in his debut I think he punted as much uh, this weekend it's like half the season last year he's, he's fourth nationally in, in punting average now at this point did did you unlock kind of a little uh, maybe more of a weapon I guess that you can utilize a little bit more this year as opposed to uh, previously in his career maybe some um, I don't know if I unlocked it we are everybody knows that he's got a strong leg and um, very good athlete the you know Rico's he's got uh, he can he can he's got so many abilities and so many talents. Uh, last year I don't think he had enough punts to register him for certain awards and and all that stuff. And that, that's not what we're thinking about. We're not trying to think about okay let's get these guys uh, certain accolades and awards. But um, this is a good start I guess for him to to qualify for is that he got a bunch of punts this. This game it's like it's you know someone mentioned that Keaton Slovis hadn't had a rushing touchdown in his career and now he has two so let's get back to the basics which means Keaton throw some touchdowns and and uh, Rico punt the ball and if we got to go for it on fourth down we will but uh, he, he's always been a team player it's not about him but I know one thing is that we, if we need him to make a play and if we need him to make a kick he can do it and, and he's 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 got so many talents that I just wish we could have well, block that fake punt up a little bit better so he can show off his legs a little bit more. This is, he's, he has a good, uh, you know, I guess uh, rushing average, and this one didn't help it, though, after his first one. So we'll, we'll try to see if we can utilize his talents again. Okay, we've got time for a couple more questions. Let's go um, Jared Lloyd and then Jay Drew. You touched on how good this team you're facing on Saturday was last week. How important is it for this team to be take those steps you were talking about and getting back to those basics as as you prepare for Saturday? Oh yeah, it it, it, it seeing it on film against against um, Arizona State, um, it was it was good for us as coaches and players to see how how tough they played and how talented they were and how they held held their own. So um, that was uh, revealing to us, and for me, it's 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 nice because I, I you know I. The film can't lie, and so our guys see it on film. They know that they have to be, they have to be better. And um, the sense of urgency is—it's going to—it's it, for some reason it just seems like there's a little bit more 
uh, it's moving a little bit more rapidly than before, and that's a huge compliment to uh, Southern Utah and what they did last week. And I know they're prepared. They're, they're really familiar with what we do on offense and defense, and so uh, it's, it's not a lot of uh, secrets here. Other than we just need to play fundamentally sound and, and uh, get, the, get to this game this weekend and improve in all three phases, and then we'll see what happens. Oh, I mean, Go ahead, sir. A lot was made of the fact last year that you played better at night than you did in the day. Um, obviously, with a day game coming up, um, was too much made of that, or have you taken some steps maybe to figure out how you can perform better in the day? Well, mo- the majority of our practices were in the day, so this year, I don't know if, it, if any of the, uh, the past stuff really matters to the guys that are here with, you know, I, I think... I think we'll. Well, I think we'll be just fine. I think it's going to be nice to be in the uh, sun and or whatever. I don't even know what the weather's going to be, but who cares? It's going to be football, and, and it's going to get here quickly compared to you know waiting to the the evening. We'll, we love playing football no matter the time of day. This one happens to be at at 1 p.m., so we're, we'll be really excited for that game.